Knutsford Boulevard, the heart of New Kingston's corporate world where big deals are negotiated during the days. But as night falls, another side of this financial district emerges where homosexuals struggle to survive. I'm Keneal Gale. Let's go inside the story on Kingston's homeless homosexuals. Living on the streets and fighting for survival is a harsh reality for many members of Jamaica's homosexual community. The men roam the streets of Kingston where the vacant lots their only homes. Sanjay has been homeless for two years. A fallout with his family landed him on the street. Because my sister find out that I'm gay. And it's not only that, um, well, I couldn't get along with them so well. So it's like the community came along on me and I have to flee for my life. Sanjay sought refuge with a friend in an abandoned building, but that wouldn't last long as their belongings were lost in an alleged arson attack. Every clothes that we had burned to ashes, everything that we have gone down the train. Like Sanjay, Joe found himself homeless several years ago. Joe ended up on the street after he fell on hard times. No longer being able to pay his bills, he had to find somewhere else to live. For the past three years, Joe and some 30 other homeless homosexuals called this vacant lot on Cargill Avenue home. He points out that when he first moved into the vacant lot, only a few homeless people lived there, but that would soon change. Since October, it dominated completely with gay. It's just gay guys. And uh, maybe um, uh, uh, because people know that they're gay, because we used to have straight people in there, but because, you know, they move out and so. After three years of occupying the lot, the men were recently evicted. Heavy duty equipment came in a few days ago, clearing the lot, sending the men fleeing. I had to now run with my bag. I didn't have anywhere uh, proper. I would uh, come straight up to J Flag and leave my bag all over the place. Then I hit back the road, trying to find the rest of the guys, how to tell them where to, say if they can rest for a while instead of walk up and down with suitcase and big bags and, and it don't look good. Unlike Sanjay and Joe, Ricky, who is much younger, only recently began calling the streets of Kingston home. Ricky, who is from an inner city community, says he voluntarily left his family's house because he didn't want to jeopardize their safety as community members began questioning his sexuality. So I just leave the community. I don't want to see the community for no more reason, no more purpose. I don't have no more purpose and there is why I don't dare. So I just come on the street now, say, but I'm bad tight on the street, but I'm be a soldier on the street. It's actually two months now I'm living on the street and the street is dangerous because the street is not nice. All of homeless, yes, all of the nice. Sometimes we have to look up my land, we're going to fall. A wet way. Sometimes we have to sleep up in a tree. Sometimes we have to sleep on concrete with cardboard and all of that outside. I'll cramp up and wake up in morning time. Patrick, who has worked with members of Jamaica's homosexual community for almost two decades, believes homelessness within the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender community has worsened over the years. More persons are actually on the street now that than when I have started out and I think one of the contributing factors is awareness most parents would put out their kids and they would go stay with somebody else a relative and then it would you know was ushers was now because of the awareness of LGBT community in Jamaica some parents and even relatives are not putting up their kids even kids who are like 12 if they found out that they are gay they put them out on the street he argues that the government needs to intervene and prosecute parents who banish their teenage sons to the streets. If a child is a minor, he's a minor. You can't have two standards. Because if I put a minor at risk under the CDA law, Child and, and Protection and Care Act, I could be charged 
if I put him out a minor, because if you put him outside, you put him in danger, he or she in danger. And if a parents put out a 12-year-old child on the street because I don't like his lifestyle, he's gay, and I don't want him in my house. What is, you, what are you, what, what is the law doing? What is government doing? What, what are you saying? Being homeless isn't easy, and for the homosexuals who once lived in this vacant lot, they say for them, life on the street is even more difficult because of discrimination and the risk of being beaten. The men say sometimes they steal to make ends meet, while others say they're willing to do anything to get by. We have to go out there at night trying to even get a little thousand dollars or two thousand dollars in our pocket to survive because starvation is not a nice thing. When you're hungry and your belly roo and roo and gas take you up, what are you going to do? Sanjay admits that he engages in homosexual prostitution to get money to buy the essentials. I've done it for the past two years while I was on the street because I couldn't get any job and I don't want people to, I don't want to be a problem to people. I don't want to be a nuisance to society or a burden to people. So what I do, I try to make myself fit in in the prostitute thing in New Kingston. Yes, we make money most of the time, but not all the time we do make money. So what we do, each time when we sell out and, and get money, we try to buy food to eat and we try to buy the necessary things, soap, roll on, toothpaste. Not many of these boys will make it off these streets or even get a decent job. Some will never be accepted by their families and that's why Jay considers himself to be among the lucky few who've escaped the streets. Jay lived on the street for years after his family rejected him because of his sexual orientation. With the help of Jamaica Aid Support and the Jay Flag, Jay got the opportunity to turn his life around after securing a job and a spot at a halfway house. He points out that although grateful for a safe place to rest his head at nights, life is still challenging. You get meals, you get bed, bed space, but I have to go out in the day and, and, and get going. You know, you have to you have to move on with life. So therefore, this place they help you to what in one aspect, but you have to pick it up from there and, and move it forward. Despite not fully reconciling with his parents, Jay says the relationship is improving, as at least now they're willing to talk to him. The relationship has been building, climbing up back to where it used to be. Um, right now, I would say on a scale of 1 to 10, we are at 8, you know, and I'm very pleased to know that they have actually come to accept and are actually still associating with me despite the fact that the, sta the statements made before, you know, the, the discrimination, you know, that they have given to me. So I'm really pleased. A small step in a bid to reclaim his spot in his parents' heart as he yearns for the day when he can return home. My greatest hope with my family is to be back home, you know, to be living under the same roof, to life as usual as how I know it. A whole lot, a whole lot. Jay no longer lives on these streets, but for those who still call the streets of Kingston home, a plea for help. Right now, I don't think enough has done to help the homeless gays who are now presently on the street. If it could be a, um, a housing for, for us, we'll be very grateful. 